Greetings, Dr. Joseph Martin here again. This discussion topic is my simple attempt, my humble attempt, to discuss dark energy and dark matter. And the subtitle is Love is Gravity. And that would also mean that this is a mystical material uh, experience that we're all having here. We are great spirits having a, a physical experience. So we, it's always important to remember that we are spirits having an earthwalk experience. In this attempt, which is kind of exciting for me and for all of us, it's an attempt to put together the very latest developments in mystical spiritual science, which is something that's only coming back to our increasing awareness after tens of thousands of years of having been lost in ancient civilizations and mystical traditions, including Shambhala and so on, and many early mystical traditions from Lemuria, Atlantis, and Hyperborea, and Pangaea. And with the emerging science, and remember that, importantly, that modern science is really only 200 years old. Well, now, if we put all the history of time of this planet together in one 24-hour period, modern science represents the last one second. So that's how much we can rely on modern science. And I'm speaking to all the fellow scientists out there to have an open mind and out-of-the-box experience and really look at all the possible ways of where science is emerging in an egoless way. This also comprises of all the knowledge from anthropology and archaeology of the creation mythologies, the cosmologies of all the cultures, ancient and modern, of planet Earth and the human species. And that's an exciting thing, too. And lastly, it incorporates all the historical evolution of the human species in terms of higher consciousness, which is the subject of an earlier video that you might want to look at on how to find higher consciousness. And that's also part of a series that will be all online. These are all introductory uh, aspects of the same topics. Now, from the latest evidence we have from NASA, I think we can all agree that NASA knows what they're talking about. They have put scientists uh, with rockets on the moon, astronauts, and done other kinds of space exploration to Mars and Neptune and Venus and so on. So according to NASA, there are three aspects that we're going to talk about here today. Dark energy, as we call it in physics, and also as we call it in mystical traditions. And isn't it great to know that finally there's a unification again on Earth in our consciousness between mysticism and physics. Dark energy, which pervades 68% of this known universe, is, and it is an expanding universe, dark energy is the innate force that's expanding the universe. Now remember, we've already said that everything in the universe is already just consciousness. Energy is just consciousness. Dark energy, and along with all the other kinds of energy, thermal, radiant, radiant energy, any kind of solar energy, these are all kinds of consciousness. It's very important to get your head out of the box and understand that all, con all energy is simply consciousness. This dark energy, which is 68% of the known universe, is expanding, and it has its innate ability to do that because consciousness, by its very nature and definition, wants to expand. Isn't that exciting? In certain cosmologies and mythologies, we call consciousness or dark energy akasha in all the world's mystical traditions and science traditions, spiritual psychology. And in this, we think of the cosmic ocean of great bliss, which is still and transcendent and eternal and infinite and ever-expanding, the ocean of bliss, the ocean of pure joy. This is the foundation for Hinduism, Vedanta, Buddhism, Zen, and many other traditions of the planet, including Gnostic Christianity. Having said all that, we also say that in the emerging global spiritual consciousness that this represents cosmic consciousness, both in terms of physics, psychology, and spiritual science. Cosmic consciousness refers to, in the tradition of, say, the Bhagavad Gita or Yogananda's 
second coming of Christ, to which I've referred to many times, is the, the father in terms of some kind of a spiritual, psychological, archetypal way of understanding that. And it is infinite and it's ever expanding, it's invisible and it's non material. Most important to realize that it is absolutely non material. In physics, we call it potential energy. It's prior to creation, there is no creation, it's before and beyond any matter or creation. So, coming down to the next stage then of dark matter, which NASA and other physicists worldwide agree is 27% of all the energy in the form of matter in the universe. What is this matter made of, this dark matter? Well, it's not the third form, solid matter, which is like planets and stars. It's simply interstellar gases, which are in, uh, of, made of atoms, and they're in the chemical table, but they have not yet formed into solid pieces of matter like stars. They are intergalactic spirals and nebulae. They all resort and come from spin and spiraling. Remember that phrase, spin and spiral, because it's a very much important part of um, things that we need to understand that will take us beyond the very s s small level of string theory and other cosmological, astrophysical notions that we still need to learn and remember. So with dark matter, we, when we look uh, through the Hubble telescope and other kinds of ways of looking, not really, we can do that internally if we know how to do some astral visioning, we can see that this is just beautiful colors in our infrared, ultraviolet kind of way of looking at things. We can see different colors and it's, everything is always spiraling one way or another in these interstellar gases. It's quite beautiful actually. Um, these are wonderful images that you can draw look online through the Hubble telescope for that's 27% of the, the energy in the known and unknown mystical universe. And we must say beyond all this, this is a great mystery. I think I know enough just to put on my little fingernail here. It's an ongoing great mystery, which is why it's such an adventure for me to explore this with you here now. The other 5% actually is what we could call in a sort of metaphoric way, solid matter. Although we know from Einstein that this solid matter, which we deem to be physical objects now in the universe, like the Earth, like the other planets, and like the stars, these are, you can see them in a telescope and you can touch them and they have a kinesthetic reality to them. However, as Einstein has said, these are all just energy again. They're all just consciousness again. Many people from Plato and Aristotle all the way down through our great philosophers, including Einstein more recently, have shown us that in fact this is just consciousness or what Jorgenander likes to call frozen light in matter. So the table isn't real, it's consciousness. The chair you're sitting on isn't real, consciousness. And more importantly for us as human beings, the physical body you see, as many now have said, including Deepak Chopra and many, many others, and it's the basis of Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine and Tibetan medicine and First Nations medicine, which I've studied and taught cross-culturally, is that your physical body is just energy. It's just consciousness. It's the lowest kind of vessel or corporeal kind of like holding a coat for something that's much greater. What does this mean for us in spiritual psychology and for the evolution of higher consciousness for human beings? Well, it means this. It means that your soul is made mostly, your truest identity, of dark energy, the Father, cosmic consciousness, something before creation. Now try to get, wrap your heads and hearts around that one. And on a lower frequency or vibration, it's made of the Christ or Buddha or Muhammad, bless his holy name, consciousness which means that this is the potential for co-creation with the Father, Mother, Creator, God, God is all that is. And that's another element or aspect of who you are as a true being. And then beyond that, of course, we are emotional beings, we're biological beings, we're botanical beings, we're mineral beings, because we incorporate all of that in our physiological, biochemical bodies here. 
and yet we're here in a physical body that has supposed substance, supposed solid matter. Well, thankfully, we're all realizing whether it's from medicine, psychology, spiritual science, physics, astrophysics, atomic physics, that the body is strictly energy, which is even more importantly, consciousness. Now, what is this part about love being gravity? Most physicists are stumped at trying to figure out what gravity is, and it's a constant that has been around for a while. You know, Newton explored it with the apple falling down. Einstein said a lot about gravity, but physicists really wonder if he got it right. Well, he did, and there's more to add. Uh, love is gravity. Einstein was aware that the universe is either a fearful place or it's actually a place. Love is gravity. There's many poets that have written that topic, actually. Love is gravity. The magnetic attraction that's created out of dark energy to dark matter and spiraling of atoms and minerals to galaxies and twin suns coming together, thats that, that gravity that brought them together is actually love. Love is what the universe is made of. It's a fearless place. It's a place of co-creation. The same with the human soul. You're looking for a twin soul. You're looking for a soulmate. What's most important for you is to realize that the love, the magnetic heart, which you know from heart math, that the heart is 50 times more magnetic than the brain, which is not the mind, because the mind is beyond the physical brain. Your heart is a magnet, and that magnet is made of love, and that magnet is love consciousness. So occupy heart love, occupy love magnetism, attract those people you want to attract into your life. One of them or more of them will be twin souls for you. That's how the universe and the cosmos is created and structured and functions. That's how the human soul and the human mind, consciousness and the human body and the human being in its fullness and its unity structures and functions itself. So occupy the heart love magnetism. Attract those in your, in your life who want to co-create something beautiful with source. Obviously, there's more to say about all this. We're going to just expand and let go of this for now. I hope this has been rather adventuresome and exciting for you as it is for me. All love, all blessings, all heart, light, unity, and all love, magnetism. Attract love to yourselves. Blessings.